Are we on the brink of a new war in the Middle East? All day long, we have seen rockets firing back and forth, taking a very real human toll. Look at this picture from the Gaza Strip in the Middle East. A father weeping, his 11-month-old son dead in his arms. At the same time, the terrifying sound of an air raid siren. Listen. And there is panic and fear in the streets of Israel tonight. And we're going to talk to ABC's Global Affairs anchor, Christian Amanpour, about what this war, if it happens, could mean to the United States. But we go first to the front lines where Israel meets the Gaza Strip. And ABC's Alex Marquardt is there in the middle in Gaza City. Alex. Good evening, Diane. We've heard some very loud explosions all around us tonight as Israeli missiles land. We've also heard the distinct whoosh of outgoing rockets as Hamas and other militant groups return fire. Tonight, it seems this burst of violence is only getting worse. All day long, rockets filled the bright blue sky. Gaza militants firing on Israel. At least one rocket landed tonight in Tel Aviv. Israel's commercial capital. Sirens blared as residents hit the ground. Three Israelis were killed earlier when a rocket hit their apartment in the south. This as Israeli warplanes pounded the Gaza Strip. Its targets, militant groups, most notably Hamas. But caught in the crossfire, at least 12 civilians, including that 11-month-old boy. What did my son do to die like this? His father cried. This is what the aftermath of one of these strikes looks like. A massive crater filled with cinder block and rebar, the strong smell of diesel fuel. Several of the houses around were damaged very badly. And the residents here on this street tell us they hope Hamas and the other groups will keep firing rockets into Israel in retaliation. Israel says this is a response to the almost 800 rockets that had landed in Israel from Gaza this year alone. This biggest escalation in years began yesterday, with Israel targeting the car of Hamas's top military commander, eliminated in the blink of an eye. Israel says it's ready to enlarge this operation, and tonight there are reports of significant troop movements towards Gaza. 30,000 reservists may also be called up, a sign that an Israeli ground incursion into this tiny enclave may be imminent. Diane? Thank you, Alex. And now we want to go to Jerusalem and ABC's global affairs anchor, Christian Amanpour, who knows this region so well. Christian, bottom line, first of all, is this region going to all-out war? Well, clearly that's something that the United States does not want to see. There's a lot of upheaval and instability right now, and any more will just be bad news all around. Already this region is destabilized. You've got this ongoing civil war in Syria. You've got tensions in Lebanon, and that brings in Hezbollah. And now with these post-Arab Spring democracies, these countries are much more answerable to their people. And if their people see that this situation in Gaza is untenable, and if they start to take to the streets, to protest against their leaders, if it inflames the Arab street more than it has in the past, that would cause more instability. But at this point, what is the U.S. obligation to Israel for defense in this situation, but also what kind of pressure to exert? The U.S. has this historic agreement to defend Israel and stand by Israel. What it hopes to be able to do is encourage Israel not to cause too many civilian casualties like what happened last time. But beyond that, the United States is not going to get involved on the ground. Where do you place the odds that Hamas will listen to the Egyptians and indeed there will be a ceasefire? I think it's going to take some time. But this, the Israelis say, is going to go on. It's not a matter of days. It could be weeks, Diane.